Good morning. Our liturgy this morning begins with the blessing of the palms out on the, well, now that you're all comfortable and sitting. We we're beginning our uh, blessing of the palms out on the labyrinth. So for those who are able, we invite you to come. If you're not, I will have the microphone on so you'll be able to hear from inside. But for those who are able to come out with your palms, please come join us and get your Hosanna voices ready. Good morning. Hey, good morning. Good to see you. Hosanna. Morning. The German with us that have a couple oh, young children. How wonderful. This is Sunday school this morning. And they will be occupied. Only on the first Sunday of the month. First Sunday of the month. But okay. there but there is um there is how how young are they? There's well there's a nurse who's childcare. Oh they'd have more fun there probably. Yeah, well, yeah, yeah, I'll show you where it is. Perfect. Good to see you. Good to see you. Hey sir. So good to see you. I just said hey. you I know. Good morning. <laughs> Although I did read the first book in this week, I knew we were doing this. I just forgot. Do you mind showing some children where the nursery is? You know where it is, right? This gentleman right here will. Um, Ginger can show them where the nursery is. Thank you. How are you doing? Good. It's our last week before we go home. It's hot here yet. Uh, oh, there you go. Hi, Spike. Hi, baby. No. Testing one. Good morning. Good morning. You're warmed up and ready. I've got the big one. Hey. Hey. <laughs> Oh, look at you. Wow. Doesn't he you just, look fantastic? Fantastic. I rented it. Smart. <laughs> it's you and I, right? We've got the microphone is over there. Good morning, welcome. Blessed is the King who comes in the name of the Lord. And in the highest. Let us pray. Assist us mercifully with your help, O Lord God of our salvation, that we may enter with joy upon the contemplation of mighty acts, whereby life and 
through Jesus Christ. When they were approaching Jerusalem at Bethpage and Bethany, near the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two of his disciples and said to them, the village ahead of you, and immediately as you enter it, you will find tied there a colt that has never been ridden. Untie it and bring it. If anyone says to you, why are you doing this? Just say, this Lord, the Lord needs it and will send it back here immediately. They went away and found a colt tied near a door outside the street. As they were untying it, some of the bystanders said to them, what are you doing untying the colt? They told them what Jesus had said and they allowed them to take it. Then they brought the colt to Jesus, threw their cloaks on it, and he sat on it. Many people spread their cloaks on the road, and others spread leafy branches as they, let, as they had cut in the field. Those who went ahead and those who followed were shouting, Hosanna! ...in the name of the coming kingdom of our ancestor David. Hosanna in the highest heaven! Then he entered Jerusalem and went into the temple. And when he had looked around at everything, as it was already late, he went out to Bethany with the twelve. God be with you. And also with you. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to praise you, Almighty God, for the acts of love by which you have redeemed us through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. On this day, he entered the holy city of Jerusalem in triumph and was proclaimed as King of Kings by those who spread their garments and branches of palm along his way. Let these branches be for us signs of his victory and grant that we who bear them in his name may ever hail him as our King and follow him in the way that leads to eternal life, who lives and reigns in glory with you and the Holy Spirit now. Blessed is he who comes... Hosanna. And let us go forth in, the, in peace. In the name of Christ, I invite you to follow the verger as we process into the church. Hosanna. Pretty good. That's Hosanna. 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 Hosanna.
Let us pray. Almighty God, whose most dear Son went up to joy, or not up to joy, but first he suffered pain, and entered not into glory before he was crucified, mercifully grant that we, walking in the way of the cross, may find it none other than the way of life and peace. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen.
pray. Almighty and ever-living God, in your tender love for the human race, you sent your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, to take upon him our nature and to suffer death upon the cross, giving us the example of his great humility. Mercifully grant that we may walk in the way of his suffering and also share in his resurrection. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. The Lord God has given me the tongue of a teacher, that I may know how to sustain the weary with a word. Morning by morning he wakens, wakens my ear to listen to those who are taught. The Lord God has opened my ear, and I was not rebellious. I did not turn backward. I gave my back to those who struck me, and my cheeks to those who pull out the beard. I did not hide my face from insult and spitting. The Lord God helps me. Therefore, I have not been disgraced. Therefore, I have set my face like flint, and I know that I shall not be put to shame. He who vindicates me is near. Who will contend with me? Let us stand up together. Who are my adversaries? Let them confront me. It is the Lord God who helps me. Who will declare me guilty? Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people.
A reading from Paul's letter to the Philippians. Let the same mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus, who, though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God as something to be exploited, but emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, being born in human likeness. And being found in human form, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Therefore God also highly exalted him and gave him the name that is above every name, so that at the name of Jesus every knee should bend, in heaven and on earth and under the earth. And every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people.
Passion of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Mark. Please be seated. It was two days before the Passover and the festival of unleavened bread. The chief priest and the scribes were looking for a way to arrest Jesus by stealth and kill him. For they said, Not during the festival, for there is a riot among the people. While he was at Bethany in the house of Simon the leper, as he sat at the table, a woman came with an alabaster jar of very costly ointment of nard. And she broke open the jar and poured the ointment on his head. But some were there who said to one another in anger, Why is the ointment wasted in this way? For this ointment could have been sold for more than 300 denarii. And they, scold the the and they scolded her. But Jesus said, Let her alone. Why do you trouble her? She has performed a good service for me. For you always have the poor with you, and you can show kindness to them whenever you wish. But you will not always have me. She has done what she could. She has anointed my body beforehand for its burial. Truly I tell you, wherever the good news is proclaimed in the whole world, what she has done will be told in remembrance of her. When Judas Iscariot, who was one of the twelve, went to the chief priest in order to betray him to them. When they heard it, they were greatly pleased and promised to give him money. So he began to look for an opportunity to betray him. On the first day of unleavened bread, when the Passover lamb is sacrificed, his disciples said to him, Where do you want us to go and make the preparations for you to eat the Passover? So he sent two of his disciples, saying to them, Go into the city, and a man carrying a jar of water will meet you. Follow him, and wherever he enters, say to the owner of the house, The teacher asks, Where is my guest room, where I may eat the Passover with my disciples? He will show you a large room upstairs, furnished and ready. Make preparations for us there. So the disciples set out and went to the city and found everything as he had told them and they prepared the Passover meal. When it was evening, he came with the twelve, and when they had taken their places and were eating, Jesus said, Truly I tell you, one of you will betray me, one who is eating with me. They began to be distressed and to say to him, one after another, Surely not I. He said to them, It is one of the twelve one who is dipping bread into the bowl with me. For the Son of Man goes it is, as it is written of him, but woe to that one by whom the Son of Man is betrayed. I would have been better for that one not to have been born. While they were eating, he took a loaf of bread, and after blessing it, he broke it, gave it to them, and said, Take, this is my body. Then he took a cup, of, a cup and after giving thanks, he gave it to them, and all of them drank from it. He said, to This them, is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many. Truly, I tell you, I will never again drink of the fruit of the vine until that day when I drink it new in the kingdom of God. When they had sung the hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives, and Jesus said to them, You will all become deserters, for it is written. I will strike the shepherd, and the sheep will be scattered. But after I am raised up, I will go before you all to Galilee. Peter said to him, Even though all become deserters, I will not. Jesus said to him, Truly I tell you, this day, this very night, before the cock crows twice, you will deny me three times. But he said vehemently, Even though I must die with you, I will not deny you. All of them said the same. They went to a place called Gethsemane, and he said to his disciples, Sit here while I pray. He took, them to, he took with him Peter and James and John and began to be distressed and agitated. And he said to them, I am deeply grieved, even to death. Remain here and keep awake. And going a little farther, 
he threw himself on the ground and said that if it were possible, the hour might pass from him. He said, Abba, Father, for you all things are possible. Remove this cup from me, yet not what I want, but what you want. He came and found them sleeping, and he said to Peter, Simon, are you asleep? Could you not keep awake for one hour? Keep awake and pray that you may not come into the time of trial. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. And again, he went away and prayed, saying the same words. And once more, he came and found them sleeping, for their eyes were very heavy and they did not know what to say to him. He came a third time and said to them, Are you still sleeping and taking your rest? Enough, the hour has come. The Son of Man is betrayed into the hands of sinners. Get up, let us be going. See, my betrayer is at hand. Immediately while he was still speaking, Judas, one of the twelve, arrived, and with him there was a crowd with swords and clubs from the chief priests, the scribes, and the elders. Now the betrayer had given them a sign, saying, The one I will kiss is the man. Arrest him and lead him away under guard. So when he came, he went up to him at once and said, Rabbi, and kissed him. Then they laid their hands on him and arrested him. But one of those who stood near drew his sword and struck the slave of the high priest, cutting off his ear. Then Jesus said to them, Have you come out with swords and clubs to arrest me as though I were a bandit? Day after day I was with you in the temple, teaching, and you did not arrest me, but let the scriptures be fulfilled. All of them deserted him and fled. A certain young man was following him, wearing nothing but a linen cloth. They caught hold of him, but he left the linen cloth and ran off naked. Then Jesus, they took Jesus to the high priest and all the chief priests, the elders and the scribes were assembled. Peter had followed him at a distance right into the courtyard of the high priest and he was sitting with the guards, warming himself at the fire. Now the chief priest and the whole council were looking for testimony against Jesus to put him to death, but they found none. For many gave false testimony against him, and their testimony did not agree. Some stood up and gave false testimony against him, saying, We heard him say, I will destroy his temple that is made with hands, and in three days I will build another, not made with hands. But even on this point their testimony did not agree. Then the high priest stood up before them and asked Jesus, have you no answer? What is it they testify against you? But he was silent and did not answer. Again, the high priest asked him, Are you the Messiah, the Son of the Blessed One? Jesus said, I am, and you will see the Son of Man seated at the right hand of the power and coming with the clouds of heaven. Then the high priest tore his clothes and said, why do we still need witnesses? You have heard the blasphemy. What is your decision? All of them condemned him as deserving death. Some began to spit on him, to blindfold him, and to strike him, saying to him, Prophesy. The guards also took him over and beat him. While Peter was below in the courtyard, one of the servant girls of the high priest came by. When she saw Peter warming himself, she stared at him and said, You also were with Jesus, the man from Nazareth. But he denied it, saying, I do not know or understand what you are talking about. And he went out into the forecourt, then the cock crowed. And the servant girl, on seeing him, began saying to the bystanders, This man is one of them. But again he denied it. Then after a little while, the bystander again said to Peter, Certainly you are one of them, for you are a God of me. But he began to curse and he swore an oath. I do not know the man you are talking about. At that moment, 
the cock crowed for the second time. Then Peter remembered that Jesus had said to him, Before the cock crows twice, you will deny me three times. And he broke down and wept. As soon as it was morning, the chief priest held a consultation with the elders and the scribes and the whole council. They bound Jesus, led him away, and handed him over to Pilate. Pilate asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? He answered him, You say so. Then the chief priest accused him of many things. Pilate asked him again, Have you no answer? See how many charges they bring against you? But Jesus made no further reply, so that Pilate was amazed. Now at the festival, he used to release a prisoner for them, anyone for whom they asked. Now a man called Barabbas was in prison with the rebels who had committed murder during the insurrection. So the crowd came and began to ask Pilate to do for them according to his custom. Then he answered them, Do you want me to release for you the king of the Jews? For he realized it was out of jealousy that the chief priest had handed him over. But the chief priest stirred up the crowd to have him release Barabbas for them instead. Pilate spoke to them again. Then what do you wish me to do with the man you call the king of the Jews? They shouted back. Crucify him. Pilate asked them. Why? What evil has he done? But they shouted all the more. Crucify him. So Pilate, wishing to satisfy the crowd, released Barabbas for them. And after flogging Jesus, he handed him over to be crucified. Then the soldiers led him into the courtyard of the palace, that is, the governor's headquarters. And they galled together the whole cohort, and they clothed him in a purple cloak. And after twisting some thorns into a crown, they put it on him, and they began saluting him. Hail, King of the Jews! They struck his head with a reed, spat upon him, knelt down in homage to him. After mocking him, they stripped him of the purple cloak and put his own clothes on him. Then they led him out to crucify him. They compelled a bypasser who was coming in from the country to carry his cross. It was Simon of Cyrene, the father of Alexander and Rufus. Then they brought Jesus to the place called Golgotha, which means the place of a skull. Please stand. And they offered him wine mixed with myrrh, but he did not take it. And they crucified him and divided his clothes among them, casting lots to decide which each should take. It was nine o'clock in the morning when they crucified him. The inscription of the charge against him read, the King of the Jews. And with him, they crucified two bandits, one on the, his right and one on his left. Those who passed by derided him, shaking their heads and saying, Aha, you who would destroy the temple and build it in three days, save yourself and come down from the cross. In the same way, the chief priest, along with the scribes, were also mocking him among themselves and saying, Those were, who were crucified with him also taunted him. It was noon. Darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon. At three o'clock, Jesus cried out with a loud voice, Eloi, Eloi, lima sabachthani. Which means, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? When some of the bystanders heard it, they said, And someone ran, filled a sponge with sour wine, put it on a stick, and gave it to him to drink, saying, Wait, let us see whether Elijah will come to take him down. Then Jesus gave a loud cry and breathed his last, and the curtain of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. And when the centurion who faced 
stood facing him, saw that in this way he breathed his last, he said, Truly, this man was God's son. There were also women looking on from a distance. Among them were Mary Magdalene and Mary the mother of James, the younger, and of Josie and Salome. These used to follow him and provided for him when he was in Galilee. And there were many other women who had come up with him to Jerusalem. When evening had come, and since it was the day of preparation, that is, the day before the Sabbath, Joseph of Arimathea, a respected member of the council, who was also himself waiting expectantly for the kingdom of God, went boldly to Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus. Then Pilate wondered if he were already dead, and summoning the centurion, he asked him whether he had been dead for some time. When he learned from the centurion that he was dead, he granted the body to Joseph. Then Joseph brought in a linen cloth and taking down the body, wrapped it in the linen cloth and laid it in the tomb that had been hewn out of the rock. But then he rolled a stone against the door of the tomb. Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of Josie, saw where the body was laid. In the name of one true, holy, and living God, amen. Please be seated. Welcome to this Passion Sunday. This morning I'd like for us to imagine for a moment the parade taking place as Jesus entered Jerusalem. Imagine with me the faces of those people touched by Jesus' short earthly ministry. The first people, the couple, who were married at a wedding in Cana of Galilee, the couple where Jesus turned the water into wine. Imagine them being there watching the procession. People shouting and singing about how they broke branches off of palm trees and olive trees and how they waved the branches to express their joy and expectation. People taking off their cloaks and spreading them on the ground before Jesus. Imagine people singing from Psalm 118 of one coming in the name of their beloved King David. Imagine all of the little children running along the parade route, caught up in the excitement and joining the parade because Jesus had taken the time to bless them. Think of the man with a withered hand who was now cutting down branches and passing them out to others the deaf and the mute that Jesus healed, who are now leading and singing. Think of those who were lame, who were now dancing in the streets, the outcasts who were now invited in to be part of the parade, the woman who had been bleeding for years and had touched the hem of Jesus' garment and was healed and now who ran alongside, the blind man, who once saw trees as people and who now clearly sees Jesus entering the city on a donkey. Today we remember the little girl who was raised from her deathbed. Think of Jesus' mother and brothers seeing all these people who were now part of Jesus' family. We remember the father who brought his son to Jesus, laid the boy at Jesus' feet and said, I believe, help me in my unbelief. Today, the same Jesus who had earlier asked all that he healed to keep his secret, finally threw caution to the wind. Jesus didn't, incur didn't quiet the crowds, he encouraged them. He encouraged the worship from those he had healed and those who had witnessed his works. What a glorious entry, a joy-filled throng of people entering the city. And yet there were people who were not eager. There were people who were in the parade not eager to worship Jesus, certainly not happy that others worship Jesus as the Son of God. Maybe they wanted Jesus to be their king and to support their causes, but they did not want a parade where people recognized Jesus' rule over the entire world. 
The chief priests, the scribes, and the Pharisees didn't want Jesus to question their motives. How dare Jesus question their position of privilege? And so they began to question Jesus about his authority. The religious leaders wanted to continue to compromise, to accept the necessity of violence, to ignore suffering, and evade responsibility. And they did. And the rest of the story is one of tragedy. This is also a story of pain, of watching Jesus or Judas betray Jesus for money, a story of disappointment when Peter denied ever having known Jesus, the, dis the sight of Jesus' disciples fleeing when Jesus was arrested. And please don't ask me to explain about the streaker. Jesus was stripped and nailed to the cross, crying out to God. Jesus dies before the palm branches are even cleared from the road. This is a story of God's love for us. Love involves a willingness to put oneself at risk. And God, who is love, was willing to risk great suffering, willing to risk betrayal, denial, desertion, willing to risk mockery, misunderstanding. Such vulnerability is perfect love. In prayerful obedience, Jesus continued his journey when he could have chosen otherwise. Jesus chose to be vulnerable, exemplifying the words of the prophet. The Lord has given me the tongue of a teacher that I may know how to sustain the weary with the word. Jesus says, who are my adversaries? Let them confront me. It is the Lord who helps me, who will declare me guilty. Jesus chose to be vulnerable, and during the events of the week following his triumphal entry, those who witnessed God's love in Jesus Christ found themselves to be in a position of vulnerability as well. The days after the parade were frightening and sad for the community of faith. As C.S. Lewis wrote, to love is to become vulnerable, to risk suffering. If you want to make sure your heart is not broken, you must give your heart to no one, to nothing. Then it will not be broken. Indeed, it will become unbreakable, impenetrable, irredeemable. Those who follow Jesus in the parade became part of the vulnerability of love. They could have taken their loved ones home from this parade, shut themselves off from the events of the rest of the week in an effort to protect themselves from the vulnerability of love, but to do so would have meant cheating, being cheated from the reality of God's love for them, being cheated from what it means to love one another. We could seek to be content this week with only the story of Jesus' joyous, triumphal entry into Jerusalem but we need the whole story. Shouts of Hosanna, people waving, dancing, singing is just the opening scene of a story of God's love for humanity from a place of ultimate vulnerability. Yet God is faithful. God is faithful, willing to risk suffering in order to bring life out of death. On this Passion Sunday, we hear the story of how Jesus has not yet finished telling us how much God loves us. Amen. Our Lord comes to us humbly, riding a donkey and proclaiming a message of peace. Let us pray, saying, For our bishops, Michael and Susan, our clergy, for all bishops and other ministers, and for all the holy people of God, that Christians hear and share the word of God as true disciples, we pray. 
that all the ends of the earth receive the words of the King of Peace, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For those in positions of public trust, especially Joseph, our President, that all leaders of church and state prefer humble service to empty power, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. That those who see the cross starkly revealed in their lives draw strength from the name above every other name, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for our own needs and those of others. For those on our parish prayer list, for David, for Jews and Palestinians around the world, for the people of Ukraine. For all who have died in the communion of your church and those whose faith is known to you alone. For Dorina Cardenas. Father Terence Carnine of the Benedictine Order. Joanne. that we who hope to greet Jesus when he comes again be ready and joyful, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. <clears throat> God, our creator, you show your sons and daughters the way to freedom from the gentle obedience of your son, Jesus Christ. Grant our petitions as we seek to follow him. We pray in his name, Christ the Lord. The peace of Christ be always with you. <clears throat> Let us offer one another a sign of God's peace. Peace to all of you this morning. I'm Andrew Rector here at St. Margaret's. So glad you're here today. If you are a guest this morning, please fill out a welcome card and place it in the offering plate so that we can be in touch with you this week. Uh, thanks also for those who are worshiping online with us. We're so glad that you're here. Well, today is the beginning of Holy Week, and I hope that you will take your bulletin home and uh, be mindful of the services taking place this week. There's a Healing Eucharist on Wednesday, Monday, Thursday service with foot washing, and then Good Friday service with Stations of the Cross to follow. And then next Sunday, we will hear the rest of the story uh, on Easter Sunday at 8 and 10. So please come, invite others, all, the, all those that you know who are looking for a place to worship on Easter Sunday. All are welcomed here. Today, before you go, I hope you will say hello to someone that you don't know. There's so many here this morning, it might not be difficult to do that. So. Um, please make your, yourselves known. You'll notice the end of our service, we will leave in silence, but uh, you are invited to coffee hour over in Karn, so that I hope you come. You don't have to remain silent during coffee hour, so you can talk. And yes, that, that reading, the gospel reading this morning about the young man who was wearing nothing but linen, and they grabbed it and he ran away naked. Um, I'm going to have to preach on that at some point, but... Uh, uh, <laughs> No one seems to have the answer, I will tell you that. Some things are just inexplicable. Also, for those who uh, desire to attend the Easter Vigil next Saturday, uh, you are invited to um, be with our brothers and sisters at St. Paul in the Desert in Palm Springs. Their service begins at 8 p.m. Well, there are a lot of things on the bullet in the bulletin for you to take home and to remember. Uh, our program year is not over. I'm so sad to hear that uh, several people are getting ready to leave the desert for their other home. It's not even hot, and you're already bugging out. Um, I hope that next year you might be able to stay longer with us, but we're so glad that you were here for the short time that you've been here. Uh, just one last thing. Next Sunday, we are expecting a lot of guests, so if you could bring some type of food item and drop it off in Carnes, that would be lovely. Uh, we want to show um, hospitality uh, in true St. Margaret's fashion. There will also be an Easter egg hunt, so you don't see any children here today, do you? But they will be here next Sunday. Uh, invite your, your grandchildren, great-grandchildren, neighbors with children. There will be an Easter egg hunt, which is a great time for everyone. Lastly, I just want to recognize... Uh, 
At our last vestry meeting, uh, your vestry elected unanimously Meredith Hardy as your junior ward, and so Meredith, congratulations. She has ministered so faithfully in so many different ways during her time as a member of St. Margaret's. Her primary responsibility will be property, and as you look around, that's a big responsibility. So, um, if you, but if you have any issues related to leadership and to property, uh, please see Meredith. She is always willing to listen and to listen um, with a, an open, open mind and a listening heart, so thank you. Well, let us now present with gladness our offerings and oblations to the Lord our God.
Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere to give thanks to you. Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, through Jesus Christ our Lord. For our sins, he was lifted high upon the cross, that he might draw the whole world to himself, and by his suffering and death he became the source of eternal salvation to all who put their trust in him. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven who forever have seen this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Thanks to you, O God, for the goodness and love which you have made known to us in creation, and the calling of Israel to be your people, and your word spoken through the prophets, and above all, the word made flesh, Jesus, your Son. For in these last days, you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In him, you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In him you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night before he died for us, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. When he'd given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And after supper, he took the cup of wine and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for all for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me.
And therefore, according to his command, O Father, we remember his death, we proclaim his resurrection, we await his coming in glory. And we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son in his sacrifice, that we may be acceptable through him, being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, put all things in subjection under your Christ, and bring us to that heavenly country, where, the, where with the ever-blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, St. Margaret of Scotland, and all your saints, we may enter the everlasting heritage of your sons and daughters, through Jesus Christ, our Lord, the head of the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, and the author of our salvation. By him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ hath taught us, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us see the gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you. Feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving.
Now in profound thanksgiving to our Lord for feeding us once more, both in word and sacrament, let's make our prayer of thanksgiving together. Loving God, we give you thanks for restoring us in your image and nourishing us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us forth in peace, be blessed, healed, and renewed, that we may proclaim your love to the world and continue in the risen life of Christ our Lord. Amen. Betty, Tom, and Chris, in the name of this congregation, I send you forth with these, bearing these holy gifts, that to whom you go, you may share, they may share with us in the communion of Christ's body and blood. We who are many are one body, because we all share one bread, one cup. Now may the God of peace, who brought back again from the dead our Lord Jesus Christ, that great shepherd of the sheep, through the blood of the everlasting covenant, make you perfect in every good work, working in you that which is well-pleasing in his sight. And the blessing of God Almighty, God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, descend upon all of us this morning and remain with us as a family of faith, hope, and love unto life everlasting. Amen. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.